Welcome to Ipswich. Now in this video I'm going to be covering the period from when the first Europeans arrived here in 1827 up until when Ipswich became a city in 1904. But let's get started by going back a lot further in time. There have been many insect and plant fossils found at Denmark Hill from the Triassic. That's about 251 million to about 201 million years ago. This is also the time that coal began to form here. This means that the entire Ipswich area was once a large swampland system. Behind me there is Queen Victoria Parade. In days gone by, there used to be two borer rings in this area, one on either side of the road Queen's Park was the site of a very ancient indigenous camp and there was a spring of water on the south side of the camp which would put it, well the south side of the park would put it over that way there. And tournaments were conducted here as well. So a very, very important place for the indigenous peoples of the Ipswich area. And even today, people are finding indigenous artifacts here in Queen's Park. The general bit of advice I can give about finding indigenous artifacts of any kind here is to leave them alone. Certainly photograph it, uh, note it on your maps, on your phone, where you found it. Notify uh, the, the local historian, the museum, Queensland Museum, tell an expert about it, but please leave it there. They belong in the landscape where they were left. Okay, so on to the first Europeans in this area. In 1824, John Oxley and Alan Cunningham discovered and named the Bremer River while exploring the Brisbane River. However, they didn't travel along it. I just found out the other day that John Oxley's full name was John Joseph William Molesworth Oxley. Two years later, in 1826, the Bremer River was explored by Patrick Logan. He discovered limestone in the area, and this was a big deal because it could be processed into lime mortar to help build the first stone buildings at the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement. In 1827, the area was founded as Limestone Hills. An overseer and five convicts were stationed here to quarry limestone in this general area. The convicts were able to produce 300 to 400 baskets of lime per week, which was sent by boat up to the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement. The commissariat stores in Brisbane were built with Ipswich lime mortar. Lime processing continued at Ipswich until at least 1849, so Ipswich at this time was merely a tiny convict outpost. A later, unconnected lime kiln was established further east near Queen's Park and the Ipswich Girls Grammar School. So where I'm standing right now is known as Cunningham's Knoll. Back in 1828, botanist and explorer Alan Cunningham climbed this little hill here he sat under a fig tree and he gazed out to the west, out that way. Soon after, he set off on a journey further up the Bremer River, further than any European had gone before, and he found a way through the mountains, through the Dividing Range and out onto the Darling Downs. So that gap is Cunningham's Gap today. But this is where he sat and contemplated his journey. may very well have sat right here. I'm hungry. Now a few moments ago I was talking about the finding of indigenous artifacts and what to do if you do come across one. I think I've just found one up here on the knoll and it's down here. Now I've already taken photos of it and I've marked it on a map but I found this blade, this very very sharp blade. See that? I'm wondering if that is indeed an indigenous flake from a stone tool. It may not be, but it's, um, it does look worked. It really does look like it's been artificially manufactured. This whole flatter area out here, back in 1830, maybe a little bit earlier, was known as the Ploughed Station. This was an agricultural post here to grow fruit and vegetables for the few people who were living in limestone hills at that time. They also grew tobacco. The whole agricultural station lasted until 1848 when the last of the livestock was uh, sold off. And it was in 1830 that George Thorne arrived 
his job was to be the superintendent of the Limestone Hills Convict Outpost and uh, to take charge of the Ploughed Station here as well. Uh, his wife was said to be the very first European woman to live in the Ipswich area. In 1842, Henry Wade drew the proposed plan of the town of Limestone. At some time soon after, however, he wrote above the title to be called Ipswich. This was the year that the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement was closed and thrown open to free settlers. Ipswich was strategically placed at the intersection of the routes to the Darling Downs and the Upper Brisbane Valley. Also of note, regarding height measurements, Wade wrote Bottom of Mr Thorne's Veranda, and he spelt it G-H. It was corrected on a new map made the following year. I tend to notice these things. So Limestone Hills became known just as Limestone and then in 1843 the name was changed to Ipswich. Now nobody really knows why the name was changed to Ipswich, certainly the area here has absolutely nothing to do with the English town in Suffolk. A couple of competing theories, one is that Gibbs, who was the governor at the time, he knew that the old Anglian name for Ipswich was Gipswick. Uh, G-I-double-P, there it is on the screen there. So maybe he just thought, oh, well, that sounds like my name, Gip, so um, I'll call it Ipswich. Sounds a bit bonkers, but maybe it's true. The only other thing we can think of is that uh, it reminded someone, this area here reminded someone of the landscape around Ipswich in Suffolk. On the 11th of October, 1843, the first auction of Ipswich allotments was held in Sydney. You see, in the 1840s, Ipswich was emerging as the much more vibrant commercial centre here in southeast Queensland. Brisbane was seen as being rather run down and ramshackle and certainly tainted by its convict past. Of course, there were some convicts here in Ipswich, though not too many. Ipswich was growing quite wealthy from the trade and produce coming in from the Darling Downs. And it was that wealth that helped to kickstart the Queensland economy. The Baker's map of 1846 shows the long trackway from the Darling Downs through Ipswich and onto Cleveland. This connected the farmers and pastoralists on the Darling Downs and the Brisbane Valley to get their produce to cargo ships at Cleveland. This system bypassed Brisbane altogether as there were murmurings of Ipswich becoming the capital of the colony. In 1841, Cleveland had been surveyed and it was recommended as the site of a major port. The attitude in Ipswich was, we don't need Brisbane. All this valuable produce is coming into our town from the interior. So why send it on to Brisbane? However, Cleveland soon fizzled as a viable port due to some ships being wrecked and the main jetty burning down. There's um, this walking trail down here near the river and they've got this uh, little post here with information which is really interesting. And just up on my right there, you can see the old footings for the original bridge. I think it was the rail bridge that went over here and over to where those shops are now. The, the later rail bridge is just behind me there. But this looks really good down here. This is um, a boardwalk and looks, I don't know how old it is, right down onto the Bremer River. Let's have a look. It was in 1846 that the paddle steamer The Experiment began a regular steam service between here in Ipswich and Brisbane. 1846, that's quite early. I would get a bit closer to the river, but it's all fenced off at the moment. I don't know what's happened. Some statues down here though, like some kids playing next to a stream, but there's no stream there. At various places throughout history, along here there's been a, a succession of little wharves down that way um, on and off for a long time. Seeing the Bremer River now, and really this is the first time I've ever seen it, I'm struck by just how small it is. And I understand that further along around the bend, around that way, there's a place called the Basin. So that vessels could come down here, offload or unload their cargo here, sail up there to the base and turn around and then head back to Brisbane. And of course with the coming of the railways, trade by boat along the river became quite redundant and so the wharves were gradually shut down and fell into disrepair. In 1849 an Aboriginal reserve was established here at Queen's Park but it was abandoned within two years. The very first newspaper to be published in Ipswich was the North Australian Ipswich and General Advertiser 
and this first appeared in 1855. Claremont House was built in 1858, the first stone house in Ipswich. This land had originally been part of the former convict outstation for lime quarrying. In 1964, the house was sold to the Queensland Subnormal Children's Welfare Association, who used it as a school until 1975. And then in 1858, Queen's Park was set aside for public recreation, and it's fulfilled that role ever since. Quite well, I might add. It's beautiful here. There's tennis courts over there. There's a lookout behind me. Um, there's a bendy tree just there. This here is St Paul's Anglican Church. It was opened in 1859 and in 1860 the church organ was installed and uh, some say that it's the oldest church organ in Queensland, which it very well may be. However, I visited the St Mary's Anglican Church at Kangaroo Point. I made a video about it. There are apparently components of that church organ which date from the 1600s. And it looks like this is the old church manse. This is a place where the vicar would have lived. Beautiful, stunning house. Looks about late 1800s, you know, 1890, 1895, something. So yeah, the church was opened in 1859. 1859 was also the year that Queensland separated from New South Wales. We knew they were going to break up eventually. At the time of separation, Queensland was broke. It had two shillings in the treasury. And before long, both of them were stolen. This here is the old courthouse built in 1859. It replaced an earlier courthouse that was built in 1847. Now, I don't know if that earlier courthouse was here on this site or somewhere else. Still, it's a really beautiful old building from so long ago. 1860 was a busy year. The town was proclaimed a municipality. This makes it the oldest provincial city in Queensland. Also in that year, Ipswich Hospital opened on Denmark Hill. And additionally, the first same-day coach service was started between Ipswich and Brisbane. In the early 1860s, there was once a Chinese man known as Cocky Jerry Jar who lived at Denmark Hill. The young men of Ipswich would torment him on occasion until he finally lost his temper and would charge at them. He was reportedly part of a program to bring Chinese workers to the colony to work as shepherds on stations. At one point on the station, a local good-looking lad devised a scheme to dress as a woman and proceeded to court the Chinaman. Not only did Cocky Jerry Jar fall for the ruse, but the young man managed to swindle him out of his £200 savings. Cocky Jerry went mad and moved to Ipswich, where he decided to live in a cave on the southern side of Denmark Hill. This area just here is next to the RSL Memorial Hall and back in the 1860s, this... Pardon me. Go and do it again. This area here next to the RSL Memorial Hall and the land that it's on as well was back in the 1860s part of a chain of gullies and the local people would come and collect their fresh water from this area right here. And the gullies were full of crayfish and eels, which the locals would eat. Incredible to think that, isn't it? That this area right in the centre of town was once open water. It's the same with um, City Hall in Brisbane. That whole area there was once a very large lagoon with an island in the middle. And this here is the RSL Memorial Hall. I think I'll go and take a look. So where I'm walking now is on the south side of Denmark Hill, and this whole area used to be a quarry in the 19th century, and it was in operation for many, many years. So all of this tree cover that you see around me here is all pretty much regrowth. This is not the original 
remnant ancient bushland. The old School of Arts building opened in 1861. The local council had some rooms in there for a while until they took the place over. I think it was in 1869. Of course, I should have checked that before I started talking. 1869, I was right. Next door to it later on, the Ipswich Post Office opened. Now, the School of Arts had a clock, had a couple of clocks on their clock faces. But then when the, um, the post office was opened, looks like 1900, they had clocks up there as well. And unfortunately, the clocks in the post office and the clocks in the um, School of Arts never matched up. Nobody knew exactly what time it was. So the clock in the School of Arts building was removed. And it's still empty even today. In 1864, the house Gulluan was constructed for Ipswich businessman Benjamin Cribb. The name means the house on the hill. Benjamin opened a store in town called the London Stores, which he got started in 1849. Later, he was in a partnership for a successful department store called Crib and Foot. There were several servants and maids employed here at Gulluan, and at one point, a young housemaid was said to have birthed an illegitimate child. Fearing the onslaught she would face being unwed and with child, she threw the baby into the property's well, where he died and was later retrieved by the domestic staff. The house is still more or less unaltered since its construction. There is the possibility that Denmark Hill was named by Benjamin Cribb. Some believe that because he lived in London for a while, he may have lived at or near Denmark Hill there. However, according to the Australian Dictionary of Biography, it states that he lived and worked in Covent Garden, which is a long way from Denmark Hill. If I had been Benjamin, I would have called it Cribb's Crib. So the reality seems to be that literally nobody knows how Denmark Hill got its name. It doesn't appear on Wade's 1842 map, in fact the whole area is blank, but the name does appear on this 1865 real estate advert. <coughs> so sometime between 1842 <coughs> and 1865, Denmark Hill got its name. In 1865, Ipswich Station opened. It was the very first station built in Queensland, and it linked with Grantchester. But why didn't it go to Brisbane? The belief back then was that Brisbane was easily reached by river in terms of cargo, and that it was more important to link Ipswich with the rich agricultural areas opening up in the Darling Downs. In 1887, the second train station was built. This is really beautiful here. This is King Edward Parade. It runs along the river and there's these gorgeous trees either side of the road. Wow, beautiful spot. This here is St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church. It was built in 1865, though I understand it had some foundation problems and in 1911 they kind of had to redo the foundations of this church and that may not have been the first time that happened. I don't think it's called St. Stephen's anymore, I think it's some other, some other name. This here is the Ipswich General Cemetery. The first recorded burial here was in 1868. However, it's quite possible that there were earlier burials here going back to the 1840s. As you can see on Wade's map of 1842, he does show a cemetery being here, though whether this was actually in existence or was just planned, is unknown at the moment. This is St. Mary's Catholic Church. This is actually the third Catholic Church. The first one was built in 1858 and was just a simple wooden church. The next one was built in 1874. And then this current one was built in 1904. And that was the year that Ipswich became a city.
That beautiful house behind me there is McFarlane House. It was built in 1876 for Mayor John McFarlane. Today, unfortunately, it has a wonderful view of the water tank. Up on Denmark Hill here, you can actually see Brisbane City. You can see the tall buildings of it. Wow. In 1879, the Blackhall Memorial was constructed at the intersection of Brisbane Street and Nicholas Street. Blackhall was the second governor of Queensland. It was moved to its current spot in 1927 due to the emergence and dangers of car traffic. In 1885, the railway workshops were begun. However, an earlier workshop was initially started in 1864. The operation was moved to its present site at North Ipswich for the constructing, assembling and repairing of rolling stock to supply the railway network across Queensland. Later, new workshops were built at Red Bank, and with the coming of diesel, the old workshops gradually became redundant. Works finally ceased here in 1995. There really are so many incredibly beautiful old houses here in Ipswich. Look at this one. Oh my goodness. Kind of looks like it belongs on a wedding cake. Oh wow, look at this place. This here is Kiraville. The land on which Kiraville stands was sold as separate lots in 1884, built 18, circa 1886. Bryn Hovred was completed in 1890. The name of course is Welsh and means Pleasant Hill. It was known locally as Blackstone Castle. It was built for local coal magnate Lewis Thomas. It was sold in 1937 and finally torn down in 1960. But why was it sold? Because someone wanted to mine the area under it for coal. Pieces of the house ended up in other buildings across Ipswich. Several items, including a door and a fireplace, ended up here at the United Welsh Church at Blackstone. Across the road there is the old Technical College, opened in 1901. Behind it is the Pump House. Is that what it's called, or Pump Room? Anyway, it was named that because just over that way, near the RSL Memorial, was where the locals got their water from in the mid 1800s. Well, that about wraps it up for my visit to Ipswich. Incredible history here. What a beautiful city, very neat. Uh, the, the buildings, the old houses, the historic places are very well looked after. Uh, it's been a great surprise. I love Ipswich. I think it's awesome. I might also like to point out that this is in fact my 150th video on this channel. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers for sticking with me on this journey. And to those of you who are not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It really does help the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.